On the morning of March 30, 2009, an employee of a Pizza Plus in Virginia called 911. According to reports, after she entered the restaurant to begin her shift, she found the bodies of Harvey and Valerie Looney. Harvey and Valerie had been married 29 years, and they worked together at the Pizza Plus. Whoever had taken their lives did so in a fit of rage, so it was more than a robbery gone wrong. The investigation would leave police puzzled, because in that small town, the Loonies were friends with everyone. Even their 20-year-old son, Christopher Looney, was unable to help police with any possible leads. Because of this, the case would go cold for several years, until October of 2012, when a new detective would be assigned to the case. The detective would begin from scratch, and after a few months, he had learned some new information. The Loonies had a $240,000 life insurance policy, and their son Christopher was to receive that money upon their death. The detective also found out that when they were killed, Christopher was in desperate need of money. If that wasn't enough, he also discovered that Christopher and his mother had a very toxic relationship. Friends of the family told police that Valerie had bruises on her arm that came from Christopher. Armed with this new information, the detective asks Christopher if he will come in for an interview. Christopher claimed that on the night of the incident, he had been sleeping at home alone, so he didn't have any alibis. The detective spent the next hour going through his statement. They ask him questions to gauge his reaction when they know he is telling the truth, and they compare it to when they know he is lying. Eventually, they ask him about the two polygraph tests that he took. You had a, you had a, a polygraph test, right? Yes. How'd that go? Uh, I don't know. He said not either pass or fail. Who said that? The gentleman that was doing the polygraph test. Okay. But you took more than one, right? I took two. Okay. So let's say the, the first one isn't pass or fail. How's the second one? Hey, I think he said it was a fail, but I don't remember. Okay. I'm guessing that if I was given the test, whether I murdered my parents or not, and, and the guy gave me the results, I think I can remember. If you're saying you don't seem to be sure. I'm fine, if not mistaken, that the, the second one was a fatal. The first one was. All right. So if you did five interviews, and they were math tests, mm -hmm. how did you get I would say... Good. Okay, so let's say if good is 75 or better, uh, 90's a B and 100's an A, what grade do you think you get? Uh, probably 90. Okay. Who did you think about the people that interviewed you? They were okay. They were okay. Do you think they knew what they were doing? Yeah. And so that surprises me because my opinion was, I didn't think they could find a reason to pull our eyes. Now, you said that, that sometimes your parents helped you with the bills, sometimes you, you, uh, you helped them. Did you ever borrow any money from your parents? I did, yes. What's the most money you ever borrowed from mom and dad? Probably $300. What was that for? The lecture. Okay. You know, I know growing up that I used to ask my dad for money, and sometimes he'd help me out, and sometimes he'd say he'd quit. What's the largest amount of money you ever asked your mother for that she said she couldn't help you out? Probably $500. What would that be for? For electric too. Okay. And that was how how close to their passing was that? How close? Mm -hmm. uh, it was years before. Right. Now I'm going to talk within a month or so of their passing. Did you ever uh, ask your mother for for money? Uh, sorry, what's the largest? amount of money that you asked your parents for, say, within the 90 days before they passed? Uh, probably $40. Mm -hmm.
After establishing Christopher's money problems, the detective moves on to his relationship with his mother. Did you ever threaten your mom for any reason? No. Did you get mad at her and think about threatening her? I've gotten mad at her before, yeah. But what, never, what, what did you get mad at her for? Well, I thought she was treating my ex's other two daughters different from my daughters. Right. So obviously, when I when I talk to people, um, what they tell me is confidential between me and them. Right. So if somebody tells me something during the investigation, I'm not going to go to somebody else and say, hey, listen, this person told me this. So I'm going to tell you for a fact that I have talked to someone in this investigation that told me that you went to your mother and asked her for hundreds of dollars and told her that if she didn't give it to you, she was not going to be see one of her grandchildren. Did that happen? No. Why do you think somebody would say something like that? I don't know. What was your reaction when you failed to call that? It was a good what do you mean it wasn't good? I mean, I understand not failing the polygraph isn't good, but what was your reaction to it? Shock. Okay. Any other reaction? No. There's three ways you can have knowledge of something. You know what they are? You saw something, somebody told you something, or you did something to yourself. Those are the three ways you can have knowledge. Mm -hmm. Based on that definition, do you know who killed your parents? No. Do you have any theories or suspicions as to who did it? Not really, no. When was the last time you saw your parents alive? That morning. What morning? Sunday morning. From what time? Ten thirty. What was the last conversation you ever had with your mother? I don't remember. You did get a lot better with your mom and dad. Uh, both. Okay. It, it, it's real important, okay, mm -hmm. that you answer these questions truthfully. If I ask you a question and you answer it truthfully, I can eliminate you from this investigation, right. okay? If you tell me something that doesn't match what we know, again, instead of eliminating you, it's going to put you in the middle of it. So when somebody asks you, uh, who did you get along with better, you, that's not a both answer. There's five flavors of ice cream on the board up there, right? And my favorite is banana. His favorite is chocolate. Your favorite is vanilla. And you hate pistachio. So please go ahead and answer that question. Mother. Okay. You got along better with your mother? All right. Tell me why you thought you got along better with your mother. Uh, we never argued or fought over a really easy thing. What was the last thing you argued with your father about? It really wasn't an argument, but it was over his truck. Okay. On the brakes on it. Okay. Again, you need to talk to me in more than two word answers. Truck, brakes, valve, can I call a friend? You can tell me. What happened? When I say to you, what did you argue with your dad about? You need to tell me that story. The brakes had the caliber broken, and it was when I was driving it, apparently, and he wanted me to pay for it. All right. So far, Christopher has told the detectives the exact opposite of what friends and family have said. They say he hates his mother. He says she was his favorite. They say he has a temper, and he says he's very calm and relaxed. 
The detective is getting closer to accusing Christopher of taking his parents' life. However, he wants to be careful not to scare him into asking for a lawyer. If you were involved, would you tell me? Yes. You know, sometimes when you get really angry, you think about doing something even though you you wouldn't. It's, it's human nature. It's like you, you say to somebody, do you ever just think about killing your ex? And the guy says, not since lunchtime. It doesn't make him a bad person. Do you ever get so mad at your parents that you thought about harming them even though you didn't? No. How do you think the person who did this feels right now? Uh, that I don't really know. What do you think should happen to the person who did this? To the jail. A lot of times, when I talk to people that are involved in something like this, many times after it happened, they're sorry, they wish they'd never done it. Do you think the person who did this deserves any type of second chance? Say they were sorry for doing this? Not really. What do you think's the worst thing that would happen to you if you said you were involved in this? The worst thing? Mm -hmm. Probably the Why do you think that? Uh, it's just what I've seen happens most of the time. Mm -hmm. Because Christopher's DNA matches his parents, it's difficult to prove that he was there, even if he did leave DNA behind. Also, there's a good chance he visited his parents while they were working on more than one occasion. This makes it very hard for the detectives to convince Christopher they have strong evidence against him. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, we talked to the FBI's behavioral science unit in okay. Quantico, Virginia, and they do profiles mm -hmm. of people that commit certain types of crimes. So, for example, if he and I are looking for a serial rapist, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to call the behavioral science unit and we're going to ask them, what type of person are we looking for? Right. And they're going to tell me, oh, you're looking for a male white of between 20 and 30 years of age. Mm -hmm. You're looking for somebody who's not highly uh, educated, that type of thing. Okay? So, when we talk to them, you know, one of the things that we had explained is that whoever did this cleaned the place up, tidied up after the fact. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that was done? Uh, the hot stuff. Okay. And what type of stuff do you think the person was trying to hide? Uh, the person was wearing gloves, you could still leave DNA at the scene. Do you realize that? Yeah, there's a thing called touch mm -hmm. DNA. Okay, so uh, even though I'm wearing gloves, if my arm brushes against the counter, let's say, I'm going to leave skin cells right. on the on the counter. That, that's what they that's what they refer to as. Okay. Why do you think the person that did this took the deposit? but left your mom's purse there. I mean, obviously, if it's robbery, why do you think they didn't take your mom's purse? No, I don't know. Your dad had money on him. They didn't take that either. Any idea why that might have been? No. Is that... Is everything you told me here true? Yes. Is there anything you'd like to change your answer to? No. For sure. Can I tell you what we're going to do? We're going to step out and review some stuff, and we'll be back. Okay. okay? The detectives leave the room to regroup and go through the next line of questioning. When they re-enter the room, they decide to confront Christopher and accuse him of taking his parents' lives. All right. Like I told you, I've interviewed um, lots of people mm -hmm. that have been working on this investigation. And there's no doubt uh, you caused the death of your parents. 
want to sit down and talk to you for a few minutes, all right? Like I said, there's no doubt that you're involved in this. Now, what i got to ask myself is, why does something like this happen, all right? And when you look at these types of things, there's always what they call a precipitator. A precipitator causes someone to do something that they normally wouldn't do, all right? And one of the things we're looking at here is anger, all right? And when you have anger, okay, you don't act the way you normally do. Think of a time with maybe one of your girlfriends. You got into an argument and you got angry and you said something and later on you said to yourself, boy, I wish I hadn't said that. Mm -hmm. Now, in my experience, a lot of times when we get into these situations, there's two things that a person's going to worry about, okay? The first thing they're going to worry about is, is anybody going to find out what's happened to them? The second thing they're going to find out, I'm sorry, the first thing they're going to uh, worry about is they're going to find out they did something. The second thing they're going to worry about is what's going to happen to them, okay? Now, I deal with two types of people in these situations. The first type of person is the type of person, no matter what you say to them, all right, they deny everything. You probably know somebody like that, okay? Something will happen right in front of you. And you'll see it, and you'll ask them about it, and they'll say, it's not me. When you deal with those type of people, those are the type of people that don't care. Okay? And if you don't care, you're wasting your time talking to those type of people. Now, the reason I came back in to talk to you is because I think you are the type of person that cares. All right? And when you're talking with those type of people, sometimes those people make a mistake. They do something that they wish they hadn't done. Now, when you look at that situation, what I'm looking at is what caused something to happen. All right? And in this situation, what caused this to happen was money. This is what caused this to happen. Now, there are other reasons that other things happen, but in this situation, what caused this to happen was money. Now, when you have those types of situations, people don't think clearly, all right? They're focused on their problems. And this happens with a lot of different people. But again, what I have to look at is, when I'm talking to someone, does what they tell me match what I know? Okay, that's how a police investigation is done. Christopher sits quietly as the detective tells him that he believes Christopher is his main suspect. It goes without saying that an innocent person accused of such a crime would not sit quietly and listen to the accusations. The detective continues by telling him it's not physical evidence that leads them to him, but it's the interviews of friends and family. And that's one of the things that uh, is really jamming you up. It's not necessarily uh, physical evidence. All right. It's the fact that a lot of statements that I've taken from other people, all right, don't match what you say. Right. Now, when you talk to people, those are the things that get people jammed up in a, in a real life investigation. If the police ask me, "Do I own a gun?" and I say no, and they find a gun in my car, strike one. If the police ask me, have I ever been violent, and I say no, and they found out I was arrested for an assault and battery, strike two. These are the types of things, okay, that will jam somebody up, all right? So I'm not in here to prove to you, okay, all the evidence I have and what I know. And here's why. I've had people say to me sometimes, hey, show me the money. Show me what I've got. If you've got so much, how come I haven't been arrested yet? Because I'm not ready to do an arrest yet. I've got a, another uh, DNA uh, swab off the fire extinguisher coming back from the FBI. Okay, I've got a footprint on your mother. Okay, that's I'm waiting for that 
to come back, but one of the reasons I'm in here talking to you is to just talk about this to see what type of individual we're dealing with, okay? The fact that this happened and the fact that you're involved can never be changed, okay? You can't put the genie back in the bottle, okay? That's the way it is, all right? What I'm looking at is how do we react to what happens? So I've talked to lots of people, and I know why uh, certain things happen, okay? So there are certain things that we can talk about. But again, what I'm looking for is, does what you tell me match what I know? That's the key thing. All right, now, there's some things I'm going to share with you later on that are probably going to be very important. But I'm not going to put all my cards out on the table, okay? Not because I'm withholding information from you. It's because I've, I've talked to people and say, okay, tell me how you know I did this. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I know you know in your heart that what you did, you normally wouldn't do. I know that. Okay? And I know for a fact that if you could turn the clock back, you would. There's no doubt in my mind. Alright? But what I want you to realize is what you did, you made a mistake. I know it and you know it. What I'm saying to you now is don't make another mistake and not get this straightened out by not telling the truth. You owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family. You owe know, it to your parents to tell the truth there. Okay? Lay it, on the, lay it all on the table. Because I'm going to tell you, a lot of times in a situation like this, what the person is concerned about is what's going to happen to me. What's, that's what I'm worried about. If I tell the truth now, what's going to happen? And I'm telling you, all right? a big difference when you tell the truth. Even when you look at minor things you've done. When you think of things that you've done, even when you were a kid, how many of them did you really get away with? I don't know about you, but <laughs> maybe I didn't get away with too much. But I'm just saying that. The truth always comes out eventually. What I'm saying here is, tell the truth now. All right? I don't think this was a contract hit. I don't think uh, you, you sent two guys in to do this, all right? Because if you did, I'd be wasting my time. I think you acted out of character. You did something you didn't intend to do. I think you got out of hand, all right? And if you're sorry, you need to tell me that. The detective continues talking without taking a break for two hours. He doesn't want to give Christopher time to think of more lies, and he's trying to convince him there is no point in denying the accusations. Eventually, all the detective's hard work pays off, and Christopher confesses to the crime. Because Christopher whispers his confession, most of the audio is impossible to hear. However, we were able to put some of it in this video. Who did you talk to first? Your mom or your dad? Okay. And what happened next? I'm sorry? She pulled out the purse again. And did that make you angry? Yes. Was she angry with you? I'm sorry? Did you did you use the knife first or the, the fire extinguisher? After confessing to the detectives, Christopher tells the mother of his children what he has done. You don't even have a lawyer in here with you. I don't know what to think. Oh my God. Oh. Oh, my God. 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 O
In the end, Valerie and Harvey loved their son, but they ran out of ways to help him. Christopher was very greedy. He took his parents' lives because he wanted their money and possessions. He did his best to hide what he had done, and he only confessed when he believed he was already caught, and he thought confessing would benefit him in some way. On July 23, 2014, Christopher pled no contest to avoid the death penalty, and he was sentenced to life in prison. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. I will see you next time, here on the Red Tree Crime YouTube channel.